Welcome to the first in our new short series on this flight controller and the other bits on the table as well. This is technology from flyduino.net and it is the KISS flight controller with the KISS ESCs and also the KISS 24 amp ESC mounting boards as well. And we're going to look at each of these in this video and then the next one then we'll actually set it up, put it together and put it on a craft, we'll get it flying and then we'll go through in some of the last videos some of the tips and tricks for setting up things like FR Sky Telemetry on it too. This board is a little bit different from some of the others that we're seeing on the channel. This is a boutique style board where the hardware and the software are designed hand in hand. So the software that we're going to run on this doesn't run on anything else. It's designed and optimised to run with this flight controller. And this flight controller is designed and optimised to run with this ESC. And this ESC is designed and optimised, you get the idea. So the way this works is putting this all together is a very simple and easy process and it gives you a fantastic flying racing quad. Now I've not actually flown this board yet but I've spoken to quite a few people who have and they absolutely rave about its performance. If you want to add things like multicolored lights and sonar and all those kind of bits and bobs this isn't the board for you but if you want to get your hands on a board that's easy to set up, configure and flies absolutely brilliantly then everyone says this is the one to try, so we'll try it. What we'll do is go through each of these pieces in turn in the video, and then at the end we'll talk a little bit about the software before we close this video out, and then start getting the pieces together to build the quad in the next one. So the KISS flight controller, as we've said, is a little bit of an unusual animal. It looks slightly different from the others on the market, and it behaves slightly differently too. It'll support tricopters, quadcopters, and also hexacopters as well in both plus and X configuration. It doesn't do planes, it doesn't do ground vehicles, it doesn't do antenna trackers. It's just here for us quad pilots. Inputs, it'll do PPM, PWM, it'll do Spectrum Satellites, SBUS, and it'll also do some of the wackier stuff as well, like some D, some, some O. So whatever receiver you're using, you should be able to use it with this guy without a problem. It's really small and lightweight. It's only about 4.6 grams, has 30 millimeter square holes to mount in. Each of those are about 3.2 millimeters wide. So it's standard stuff. We're gonna be using M3 nylon screws to mount this guy to the frame. The really cool thing is that this thing at the bottom is a voltage regulator. So you can plug this flight controller directly into a 2S to a 6S, but I'd probably say 2S to 5S battery, and you don't have to worry about battery eliminator circuits if you're using Opto ESCs. All that kind of stuff is taken care of. You plug this guy directly into your flight battery, and it will do the rest for you. So on the board itself, we have all of the inputs down the right hand side and we have all of the outputs down the left hand side with the USB at the bottom. So here we have our first set of bits and pieces. We have things like the signal for the PPM S bus. Then we have a plus five volts and then the ground pin. So those would be the first three we'd connect to a receiver. And you can see here that the way it works is that we can either solder directly to these nice large pads or we could solder pin headers onto here that we can plug things into. I'm going to probably use pin headers just because it makes it easier for us to do things in the video. And then on the back side, you can see that the setup continues. The same side that has all of the inputs they continue to have the inputs at the back. So for PPM, we'll have eight channels. SBUS will give us a lot more. Uh, for PWM, we have six channels. So we have elevator, aileron, throttle, rudder, and then auxiliary one and auxiliary two to control things like the flight modes. Those are all down here. On the other side, we have the rest of the PWM outputs. So if you're using more traditional ESCs and you want to connect it that way, then you can just connect it up here a TRX a PW1, then we have a ground TRX PWM3, ground TRX PWM5, and the even numbers are on the back. So you can wire this thing up without too much of a problem. There's a couple of extra pads though that need to be talked about that are at the very bottom. You'll notice here that we have an SCL and an SDA. Those are the external 
I squared C connectors or I2C. I know I always get that the wrong way, so I'll start hopefully saying it right from now on. I squared C. And on this side, we have a receive and transmit set of pins for something like a Bluetooth, but you can also connect it to things like a Minim OSD for on screen telemetry and things like that as well. And then the other things at the bottom, of course, is then we have two great big whacking ports here that you can connect up to for external bits and pieces. So there's quite a lot crammed into a relatively small board. So the next thing we'll talk about then is the ESC. The ESCs are available in a couple of sizes. These are the new 24 amp versions. They're a little unusual in that they come like this. You can connect your own wires to them if you want. And the way it works is that you have uh, positive and negative power connections here on this side. You have a couple of inputs here for the signal, a ground and a signal. And then if you're standard, three outputs here for the MOSFETs to drive your motor. Now you could use them like this and add your own cables and wire them up, but we're going to use them with this bit of technology back here that we'll have a look at in a second. Couple of things about this. The KISS ESCs, again, are different from all the others that you're looking at. It's a 32-bit ARM Cortex multiprocessor that's running all this thing. That's what that thing is at the back, running at 48 megahertz. It's got very advanced auto timing. It has a really small weight, it's about 3.6 grams. It has some really, really cute things like freewheeling, regenerative braking, very rapid throttle response. Again, it's 2 to 5 FS LiPo capable, and it also supports one shot 42, one shot 25, and normal PWM signals too. So the KISS guys are really at the forefront of things like one shot 42, which will give us even better ESC response. So the next thing we need to talk about then is this thing, which is the KISS carrier designed for the ESCs that we've just had a look at. These ESCs fit in each of these holes. They don't fit in it, they fit on top of it. So you'd pop them on like that and then flow some solder around it. And that will automatically make those power connections, signal connections, and then you connect your ESCs here. Now that's a pretty big board. It's about 100 millimeters by about 45. So it won't fit in all frames. We've managed to find a frame. I think that this is going to fit in beautifully. That's on its way. That's why we're kind of hanging on for the next video. You can see here that it's actually denoted which ESC is in which corner. So you can mount it on the frame the right way. Big connectors to put your battery into here and then lots of other pins if you want to take individual voltages out because it does supply the voltages and also connect all of the signal wires and everything using a little cable up into the flight controller. So the cable is going to plug into here and then the other end of it is going to plug into the flight controller and all of that wiring is then taken care of for us. So it's a really cute, elegant solution. It's just that for things like a ZMR or a QAV250 frame, this won't fit because there is stands in the way that um, will allow you to mount this directly to it. However, some of the newer frames that are coming out where the top and bottom plates are just connected at either end, uh, this will fit into beautifully. Last thing we'll talk about then is the actual software that goes along with this thing. Now, as we said, the software is completely different from the stuff that we've already looked at. It's actually developed just for the KISS system. It's optimized for this stuff, dead easy to install and set up. There aren't multiple tabs. There's only three in the whole thing, and it gives you very fast flight performance, and it hopefully is easy to set up. That's what everyone's telling us, and from the feedback that I'm seeing, that's the way this thing kind of works. To go and actually download this is really straightforward. What you do is you find the Chrome store and then you search for KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. And then you'll be able to find it. And then it's a simple case of just clicking install and it will appear in the Google Chrome launcher on your PC. Once it's installed, then you can start it. And then it's a simple case of connecting up your board and starting to go through the configuration routine. And there's again, there's only three tabs. So when we get to that part in the next video, I'm not expecting it to take a very long time at all. So if you want to know more about this system, uh, then I'd recommend that you go to flyduino.net. There's loads of information on here. 
You can also download the manuals for the flight controller and the other pieces that we're looking at too and have a read up and find out exactly what we're talking about. The demand for these things is pretty high. So what I'd recommend is that you keep an eye on the shop. And the way it's working at the moment, as soon as this stuff comes into stock, it's immediately selling out. So to keep an eye on it, and when you see this stuff, I'd recommend you get hold of it because I know the guys are struggling to keep up with the high demand. So stay tuned for the next one in the series. What we're going to do is put all of this stuff together and then we'll take it out and give it a fly and see how it actually compares to the other flight controllers that we've had a go with. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.